I, I'm, I am confident what I saw was legit. Mm -hmm. This, this guy is, this British guy is interviewing Tom Holland about Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. And very early on says to him, he says, why are you talking in a British accent talking to me? Because the British, so he says, why are you talking in a British accent talking to me? And Tom looks at his, I think he looks over at like the people he's with, his assistant or the people, and his manager, and he goes, um, what do you mean? He says, well, because, you know, Spider-Man, you know, he's, why are you talking in a British accent right now? He says, because I'm British. What? He says, and then he goes into his English accent. He says, yeah, for Spider-Man, I have to do this. But when I'm Tom Holland, I'm, I'm me. It's, it's Peter Pan. I mean, Peter Parker lives in Queens and I'm from London. The guy genuinely thought he was an American doing an affected British accent while he was talking to him in the interview. And you could see Tom Holland's face. He's trying to not show the guy, oh, it was, it's pretty bad. Yikes. Yeah. Like, do some research. No kidding. Come I... on, you're interviewing the guy. At least know his nationality. But <laughs> Tom Holland is a spot-on American actor. Welcome back to our stupid direction. Some Corbin. Uh, you do a pretty good American accent. No. Yeah. So, I'll tell you what. I can do an Australian. Brits. Got it on the Bobby. Wow. To everyone in Australia, I'm sorry for two things. Shame on the Bobby, crocodile dumb day. These are equally insulting your culture at these days. The first thing I'm sorry for is all of the COVID stuff because it's really bad. Equally bad is what just happened to you through the auspices of Corbin Miles. Crocky. <laughs> You like my Australian? That booty. What? <laughs> what? What did you say? What is my wife doing? That booty? That booty. Said booty. Oh, <laughs> she was being, she was being, the crocodile had to say, oh, look at that beauty. Oh, Isn't it gorgeous? Oh, yeah, the like, beauty? Oh, yeah. Any crocodile he loved, she was a beauty. His son is identical to him. It's oh, my amazing. goodness. Both of his kids are gorgeous. I love both of his kids. B been... Bindi, did you watch Bindi when she was did Dancing with the Stars? No. She did a tribute dance to her dad that made everybody... I'm, st I'm still needing to hydrate from the amount I cried watching her do that dance. It would have been great to see uh, Steve Irwin and his son. Oh, yeah. Because they're identical. In terms of they look identical and he, just the, their personalities are the same. He'd be so freaking proud, proud of his yeah, kids right be. now. Anyways, today we got a, a Rand Beer answers questions from fans. Oh, so sweet! He, he did a, uh, a interview with um, say her name. Uh, Anupama Chopra from Oh, film, I know her from Film Companion. Yep. Um, but he, he, I think he did a sit down with her, and then there was an audience, and so they got to ask him questions about the craft and nice. other, other things like that. Excellent. And so he kind of answers them. Cool. Uh, and that's what we're going to listen to right now. Groovy, groovy, groovy. Okay, guys, let's go. Hi, Ravi. Hi. My name is Asha. Hi, Asha. I'm a Are you uh, a sparring actor? Writer. Writer, lovely. Okay. Yeah. We don't have many of you in our field anymore. <laughs> thank you. Every writer wants to direct a film, so like you know, they yeah. come as a director. But thank you. I hope you have some good material. Yeah. So uh, my question is, uh, many actors say that what they look for in a script is a great character and amazing story. But uh, when we approach any actors, we have to go through a manager, and manager they have their own uh, requirement. So they uh, ask for three, four things. One of them is a director. Who's the director? Who's the producer? Who's the investor? Is there a studio on board? So, uh, that's to see if you're really legitimate. Think that a manager is the right person to judge a script. They're not, not at all. They're not judging the and script. How I've lived my life, I can't speak about anybody else. I've never had a manager that way. You know, anybody who offers me a film messages me straight out. Um, but I think more than just the director and character, again, I'll speak for myself. I think what you really look for is if the director or the writer have anything to say through the story. Are they just making this film because they want to make a movie? Are they just making this film because they have the money or the backing of a studio? Or really that director has something to say, you know, through the story. And I think that's important. So this manager uh, world, I don't really understand. Um, I get a lot of offers from new filmmakers and sometimes you can't hear them because, uh, you know, you're already so busy working on your current projects. So you, you miss out, I feel. I don't think it's, it's, it's arrogance, but you miss out on new stories or new characters on something that I can, you know, do something which will improve my career as an actor. Uh, but avoid these managers, you know, always try and reach the, reach a director if you can't reach the actor, you know, at least get a director on board. 
but managers are quite detrimental. Good evening, Ranvi. Uh, my name is Siddharth. Yes, sir. Tamasha has been a wake up call mm-hmm. for like a lot of people, including me. So, has like has there been a wake up call moment in your life where you via a film or an incident where you aspire to do something radically different, along with acting, of course, but something that you aspire to do after that film or an incident, mm-hmm. like. I think my uh, life changing uh, moment uh, came only after I came back from film school when I assisted Mr. Bansali on Black mm. you know, when, when the shit got real. Mm. You know, I, all this while I was dreaming of being an actor or director but now I'm in this big bad world of films you know I'm seeing Amitabh Bachchan, Rani Mukherjee, Sanjay Bansali I'm seeing all these great artists at work and I realized like this is not easy you know there is uh, there's lots to do and you know it's the time that uh, really built an ambition inside me. So I think my that apprenticeship, apprenticeship yeah. in black, that one, one and a half years, uh, was a defining moment in my life. Mm. Thanks. Hi, my name is Tripagna. So are you, uh, what, what are you uh, currently I'm working in Dakshi, but I'm joining Mami next. Oh, so nice. Hopefully see you more often. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, firstly, I really liked Roy. I don't know how many of you will agree to me, but I... I think also don't agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> that is a true fan. That's a true fan. She really enjoyed Roy. I really like Roy. I think I fight with people when they say they don't enjoy that. Uh, my question is a little technical regarding the acting thing. Film Companion unfiltered me. They did a thing with Ayushman and Pariniti. Uh, Pariniti had a point of view that acting should be a little filmy and not like real or subtle and Ayushman on the other hand had a point of view that it should be more real, he can't act filmy. What category would you follow? Uh, well, I think an actor should be uh, malleable, you know, sometimes the tone of a character is filmy. Like in a Rashkumar Hirani film, I cannot do the acting I do in an Imtiaz Ali film and vice versa. So every film comes with its own tone and as an actor and a lot of you aspiring actors here is to understand the tone is very important. Sometimes a lot of days are passed and then you realize, Arey, yaar, ye film ka tone ye hai, you know, and that tone helps you a lot because that tone will give you the emotion, will give you the, your, your, Same your, thing with the TV uh, kitna yeah. dalna chahiye, kitna, you know, how to say it, how to perform it, how much physically you need to be present in this film. So, uh, so I think an actor has to be malleable to both the tones. Uh, if he just does one tone kind of acting, then he'll become very stale very soon. Hi, Randy. So, uh, what's your name? Shubham. Shubham. My name is Shubham. Uh, so, what has been your inspiration? Like, uh, you have been successful in films like uh, Talkstar, Murphy, and Adele. So, what has been your inspiration to work so hard and what has been the motivating factor? Motivating? To be good at what you do. Um, it's the only thing I'm decent at is the movies. And I'm kind of above average in football. So, if I'm playing a football game on a Sunday or if I'm acting on a film set, uh, I have a deep desire. Uh, to be good at it, you know, and to surprise myself and uh, and it makes me feel alive, so I'm, and it comes from the part, you know, uh, getting inspired in this film industry is a luxury, you don't get inspired by every film you do, you know, and when you're inspired then it's all easy, but the trick is when you're not inspired, how do you make it work then, mm. you know, then you really have to, yeah. it just becomes menial work, day by day you're building it. And making or working with someone that you don't better, work well with some sense out of what you're doing yeah uh, so yeah and uh, do you think uh, rock uh, rockstar was your best film ever till now film i don't know uh, you know because a lot of people have a certain uh, uh, perception that you know probably the last 30 minutes they've come together some people like really swear by it and you know i get a lot of love uh, from rockstar uh, but my favorite personal favorite film uh, is Wake Up Sit. Uh, it's a film that uh, uh, it's a it's a character that uh, you know I I, I really uh, connected with because I was that lost aimless guy. Uh, you know I, I befriended Ayan on that film and he's he's my best friend today and he's such an important collaborator for me for cinema. So Wake Up Sit would be my Hi Ranbi, this is Hitesh the side. Hi Hitesh. First of all, thank you so much for Tamasha. It has literally changed my life. Literally changed. Wow, a lot of Tamasha fans here. No, it has seriously. Big Tamasha fan right here. It has seriously changed my life. So my question is in regard to Tamasha and Rockstar only. So how do you, you know, analyze the mental state of a character when you play a character? You know, it's really difficult to 
uh, understand the mental state, like the mashup or itself. It's a very complicated mental state, you know, that people go through. While reading the script, I don't think it's possible to, you know, get yeah. that. Did you have you read the script? Yeah, I have. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because I think the script is out. I think. Yeah, yeah, it is out. Yeah, it is out. It's posted on it. It is out. Okay. It is out. So it's really difficult to, you know, understand the mental state. How do you analyze the mental state? Again, it comes through collaborations. Uh, whatever collaborators you have on the film, director being number one, and then a lot of other people. Uh, but like, say for example, if I was doing Tamasha, Tamasha would not have been possible if me and Imtiaz didn't go on the journey of Rockstar. Because of that. Uh, there are certain things I understood about his mind, yeah. about what he's trying to say. Uh, like for example, that scene the end in Tamasha. If you just gave me that on a piece of paper, I would probably say it in a very different way. Imtiaz wrote that with a lot of care, with a lot of understanding of what this character must be going through, which he over a period of time instilled in me. You know, he used to go for long walks with me before we started the film, and he used to constantly talk about Wade's head. You know. Who is this guy? And and he's not someone who you know for sure. That's me. But let's keep talking about him. He's too like he used to travel somewhere. I remember he had gone to Japan or China or somewhere, and he wrote a scene, which actually was the beginning of the Masha, which we changed, where he's talking to a Chinese girl who's escorting him to his flight, and he's talking some stupid stuff to her because he's talking in his language and she can't understand him, but she's also looking at him in a way that she's understanding his plight. Now things like this is not in the film, and it may sound very pseudo intellectual to you, but then you slowly, slowly understand this this guy's psyche, or where this director is pushing this film. Okay, you know this guy is going deeper. He's going more deeper than we did in Rockstar. Also, Rockstar was still intense, a little bit on the surface, easy emotion. Veer was more deeper because it was nothingness. Mm. Go to nothingness is 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 hard, um, but it's a process. It's and you don't realize it. Today I can talk about it, but while, but while I was doing Tamasha. I myself didn't realize that okay, you know, we are going quite deep into this character's psyche, his being. Uh, yeah, today I can speak about it. That time I didn't know. Hi, my name is Anamika. So, hi, Anamika. hi. So there was this very recent interview with Rajiv Masand, and in that interview, you guys were talking about Sanju. So during Sanju, uh, you had asked Rajiv Rani if you should work on your voice, and he had said that don't do it. It's a very You know, caricaturish. Mm. So why is that? Why is method acting so caricaturish in India? Because when Daniel Day Lewis was doing Lincoln, he worked for months to just you know master right. the voice. So I don't think uh, different different what character. I meant or what he meant that method acting is caricaturish. Um, we were speaking about Sanjay Dutt per se. Uh, of course, we cannot compare ourselves to or myself to what Daniel Day Lewis did in Lincoln. That's another level. Um, But we did this to our understanding and best of our capabilities. There was a time that you know when we started working the six eight month prep of trying to understand the character, how to play Sanjay Dutt, somebody who's still so relevant today, who people love, who people copy, people mimic. I didn't want this this performance to be bordering on mimicry and caricaturish. And sometimes what happens is when there's too much of the nuances, you know, they're looking at the way he looks like an impression, looking, right? Talk also like right. you and you know all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, you, it's a little jarring, you know. When you come and see the film, Sanju, and when you discover it, yeah, in the first few seconds, it will be weird. Okay, this is another actor portraying this actor on screen. But then my job is to make you forget that. Right. And now you have empathy for this character that you're watching on screen. Like Jamie. And after Jamie you finish this, you realize, yeah. oh shit, this was Sanju. That's life. But when you're watching the film. You have to believe that this was the actor's life who's performing, uh, and sometimes maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you know, in hindsight, when you watch the film and when an audience's reaction actually comes out, maybe I would feel shit. You know, I should have worked more on my voice. I should have done more of uh, uh, of the Sanjay Dutt mannerisms. Uh, but right now, we feel this is the best that we could do. But we await for 29 June plugging of the release date. <laughs> uh, the audiences will respond to it. Uh, hi Ranveer, uh, this is Vinod. Uh, I'm theatre actor. These are great questions. So I have to ask about uh, acting. One question is, how do you change the attitude of the character? Mm -hmm. Of the character? Yeah. I think it's it's in the paper. It's in the uh, uh, in the right. writing. Go to the I script. I remember when we did Barfi. Barfi was written as a very intense character, uh, and we started shooting. We shot around three four days, and then. Dad and me realized that it won't work if it's so serious. You know, it'll be it'll be too like uh, uh, cringeworthy. You know, he already ha is has 
the character already is burdened with the fact that he's deaf mute, and now you're making very intense and serious. It won't be entertaining. So then we decided, let's make him Charlie Chaplin. You know, let's make him someone who doesn't take his life that seriously, who's a do-gooder, and who's always smiling. Uh, so it's always in the paper. It always comes from the writing. It always comes from the script. Uh, uh, hello, Ranveer sir. I mean, you act in love stories. There's a chemistry between you and the other character. But when you're doing a script that you, where you're the hero and there is a villain, how do you work on that chemistry? I think every kind of chemistry is born in the writing. You know, actors don't bring chemistry. Actors bring that yeah, you work, can't you know that you can't provide uh, chemistry. chemistry no you honestly. just have it or you don't yep. but uh, like for example a lot of people uh, say like my pairing with Deepika on screen you know they thought that you know uh, we were going to get Jawani and Diwani uh, but at the same time we did a film called Bachna Yas you know but people didn't really like us together uh, so that's not because of Deepika and myself right only. that's also because of the writing the characters you portray so it takes a lot for you know everything to work in a film yep Huh. Did you see it? In the theatre, he's the only person who went. Big applause! Great answer! I still really want to see Bombay Velvet. I do too. I'm so interested. So interested. That the fact that it's so divisive. Well, and the, it looks so gorgeous, and the behind the scenes, everything that went into that production. It's, how on, do you, your, it's on your Akash Yeah, it's, come on! got great act. I, obviously. They can all make bad films. I'm not saying it's going to be a great film or we're going to disagree with everyone. Yeah. But, like, it's so interesting to me that there's such a divisive opinion about that film. Yeah, me too. It's, it's so, I'm, I'm intrigued. He, he seems like a very intelligent person and actor. I understand. We've seen what he does as a craftsman. Mm -hmm. But you understand a whole lot more about a person. Like, if you ever get the chance to listen to Willem Dafoe talk about the craft. Mm. Just not the person that interviewed him in art. No, you, you need a good person to interview him. He did so good with that person because that person was not equipped to interview Willem Dafoe. No. But when you listen to Walt, Willem Dafoe talk about the craft, or if you listen, have we've both had the opportunity to see Willem Dafoe in person talk about the craft. We've we've had the opportunity to to, to listen to Peter um, Dinklage. Peter Dinklage. Uh, um, come on. Who won the won the Oscar for Churchill? Den oh, uh, Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman. We've got to listen to Gary Oldman. We, I, we saw Denzel as well. Yeah, and I don't know if you did. no, I didn't get to see Denzel. But he has that capacity of, un it's very clear he has an understanding. And I love the fact that this is, again, for all of the nepotism haters out there, he went to film school. He apprenticed. He, he started out as alien number two. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I, for example... The, question, the answer he gave, we could talk on and on and on about all of his answers, which are just love spot to, on bullseye. I'd love to actually talk to him. Oh, my stars. And, and actually get delve oh, into it. Oh, my stars. Because you could tell he, even though like I know a bunch of people love Rockstar, and I thought Rockstar was a good movie. He was the thing I liked but, about yeah, Rockstar. He, he was definitely the best part of it. But you can tell he, he liked the role of Tamasha more. Yeah. Even though I think... It was more critically acclaimed of Rockstar. Like, everybody I, loved Rockstar. I bet Rockstar was more fun. Yeah. But, he, but I bet he, he enjoyed... enjoyed it was very surface level. Yes, I bet that's it was not, fun. That's not what feeds actors. No. The challenge, like he said, it's true. Much more difficult to play nothingness. Mm -hmm. If you were to do an acting exercise with an actor and put them up on the, the stage and say, I want you to show me nothingness, very few could do it. Very few could do it and make you believe they're in a state of nothingness. And what he said about the, like, that was a very good question about voice when he was portraying Sanjay Dutt versus Daniel Day Lewis portraying Lincoln. And why wouldn't you go about that? Well, number one, don't use someone else's process. Yeah. Use, find your process. And number two, Daniel Day Lewis, though he does change his voice, not always, though he does change his voice, the amount of time he spent with Lincoln was specific to Abraham Lincoln. Those are two people who really existed in history, but Sanjay Dutt is still alive. And most directors I have found, like I don't, I don't like Aaron Sorkin's choice of casting in being the Ricardos for pretty much everybody. But I do respect the fact that Aaron Sorkin said, I wasn't looking for people to imitate the characters. I wanted them to provide the essence. Mm. And that's what I think most, that's why I brought up uh, uh, Jamie Foxx and, and Ray, because he doesn't look like Ray Charles. Mm -hmm. But he, he, you felt the essence of Ray Charles. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. And it looks like he, he's genuinely, it's great that he was asking them what they what they were aspiring to be, and it looked like he was genuinely interested. This reminded me of the actor studio. I missed that show so, so much. That was a great show. Oh. That was a great show. Um, but yeah, 
If anybody knows Ryan Beer, send him our way. Uh, Wake Up Sid, I, I have heard a lot about that film. That was when, when we decided to watch, I think it was, no, that was a Patreon one of December, was Rocket Sing. But yeah, Rocket Sing always came up and Wake Up Sid always came up for Ren Beer. Um, so we'll, we'll probably get to Rocket Sing, I mean, uh, uh, Wake Up Sid. And, and Bombay and, Velvet. Uh, Bomb oh, yeah. Yeah. Is that, is that good for Romance Month? We could just make it be good for Romance Month. No, we can't well, there's another that. Onyard one that would be good for romance. The Vicky and uh, the one where Vicky has like the oh yeah the middle the finger middle finger shirt uh, and, yeah and the tapsies in it yeah. and and stuff. People said that one actually would be good I would for love romance that one. month. I would love that one. Uh, but anyways, what should be our next Ren Beer film? Uh, he does have the new one coming out this year. Yes, he does the big the juggernaut. Big juggernaut. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll actually get a teaser trailer soon. Because we just got that weird motion post. I know. <laughs> it's like okay. standing like this. He's, he's, he's standing there, and the cosmic wind is blowing his hair. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, let us know what other uh, Ren Beer stuff or the next Ren Beer film we should watch down below. Just 